Alright. Let's start with a prayer together. Let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we are able to come here and um, gather together and worship you as one. Um, Father, whatever that happened throughout the past week, um, all the hardships, including COVID, um, we thank you that you have led us through it. Um, and I pray that you are with those who are having trouble with it. Um, and let us stay faithful in you. Let us believe in you. Um, and let us just leave everything to you. And continue to pray and seek you, Lord. Um, and let us find peace in you. Uh, and Father, I just thank you for all these things. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together. Sorrows, Lamb of God, by His own betrayed, the sin of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus' slave. Silent as he. Silent as he stood accused, beaten, mocked, and scorned, bowing to the Father's will, he took a crown of thorns. salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor to thee sent of heaven Sent of heaven, God's own Son, to purchase and redeem, and reconcile the very ones who nailed into that tree. salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor to thee now my debt is it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus built. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, always free indeed. Now my debt is paid. It is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus will. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. When the sun sets free, always worry the rugged cross. To the rugged cross, my salvation.
more than just to know His love. My heart is set on Christ, and I will count all else as lost. The greatest of my crowns mean nothing to me now. For I counted up the cross, and all my love is in the cross. And all my love is in the cross. And all my love is in the So pray that we're praying to God um, that has given everything to us, everything that we need but we don't deserve. Um, so let's set our hearts on Christ. Um, let's just continue to pray. Let's focus on Him. Um, let's really believe in Him in everything He does. In every situation we come across, let's believe that it is His will, it is His plan. And whatever we go through, He will be with us. Let us believe in that. Let us be faithful. And let's just, let's just come to Him in every moment of our lives. So let's pray in this time. Today's passage is going to be Leviticus um, chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. The Lord called to Moses from the tabernacle and said to him, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you present an animal as an offering to the Lord, you may take it from your herd of cattle or your flock of sheep and goats. If the animal you present as a burnt offering is, a from, is from the herd, it must be a male with no defects. Bring it into the entrance of tabernacle so you may be accepted by the Lord. Lay your hand on the animal's head and the Lord will accept its death in your place to purify it, making you right with him. Then slaughter the young bull in the Lord's presence and Aaron's sons. The priests would present the animal's blood by splattering it against all sides of the altar that stands at the entrance to the tabernacle. Then skin the animal and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priest, will build a wood fire on the altar. They will arrange the pieces of the offering, including the head and fat, and the wood burning on the altar. But the internal organs and the legs must first be washed with water. Then the priest will burn the entire sacrifice on the altar as a burnt offering. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for Bible reading, prayer, and uh, PowerPoint. Appreciate it. Okay, before I get started my talk, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this bright uh, day. So thank you for our life as well. Dear Lord, we confess that without your help, without your grace, we can't breathe. Uh, 
just for a moment. So it is all grace that we can come here and learn about you, hear from you, and I worship you together, dear Lord. So please help us to open our eyes and open our hearts so, so we can uh, clearly hear your voice when you speak to us through this tiny, small person. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, today's talk is the second in the series. The series title is Worship, and today's topic is the burnt offering. Do you guys have the New Year's resolution this year? In our Korean congregation, each member aims to finish reading the entire Bible this year. So perhaps some of you also think, think that uh, you should read the entire Bible at least one time this year. So we start reading the Bible from the beginning of the book. So we find Genesis full of interesting stories. In Genesis, we see the story of the creation of the heavens and the earth, Cain and Abel's story, Noah's flood, so, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah's story, and Joseph's dream. They are all interesting stories, if they are not exciting. We also like the story of the Exodus as well, the story of Moses, the ten plagues, and the story of crossing the Red Sea. These, these, all these are part of the great drama of Exodus. We like the stories. That is why the story of Exodus has been made into a movie, cartoon, or novel. Even non-Christians are familiar with the story of Exodus. And then, we finally meet Leviticus. You may start reading Leviticus with the same passion you had when you started reading Genesis. But as you continue read to read the Leviticus page by page, you slowly get frustrated or get embarrassed. You may think, why do I feel so bored with this book? Is there anything wrong with this book? Or is there anything wrong with myself? What am I doing? Where I'm, so where am I now? Maybe you find this difficulty when you read through the book of Leviticus. And we finally stop reading the entire Bible because of this book, Leviticus. This is probably why you guys know Genesis and Exodus very well, but, we, but you, do not know, you do not remember anything else after that. Indeed, Leviticus is not an easy book to read. We hardly find any stories from this book. Instead, we come across the endless list of the rules and principles. Moreover, all of those rules and principles are about the ancient sacrifice, and no one is doing them today. You might think like this, why do we need to know about the old rituals? It's just outdated. I should confess, I was the same as well. I thought the same thing in my teens and twenties. Leviticus was the biggest obstacle for me to keep reading the Bible to the end. I also thought Leviticus had nothing to do with me today. However, I grew up in faith and learned about the Bible more and more. I realized the importance and significance of the book Leviticus. In particular, after I understood the gospel message, what the gospel message is, the experience of reading Leviticus was no longer a burden. It is essential part of our faith. Now I have found that Leviticus is full of God's grace and love. Whenever I read Leviticus, I find myself in the midst of grace and love provided by God. The New Testament writers also understood the death of Jesus Christ on the cross in the context of the Old Testament sacrifice uh, described in Leviticus. So in order to fully understand the meaning of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, we must understand Leviticus. So I boldly can say, if you don't understand the Leviticus, probably you may not be able to understand the meaning of crucifixion as well. Leviticus is a book about sacrifice. 
The book teaches the Israelites' five sacrifices, burnt offering, grain offering, peace offering, sin offering, and guilt offering. Each offering has significance and its part in the significance of Jesus Christ's crucifixion as well. Today's passage is about the most basic of them, the burnt offering. In verse 1, the Lord called Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting, saying, saying the, tent, the tent of the meeting is another name of the tabernacle. So God met Moses in the tent of meeting and spoke to them, spoke to him. Last week, I said that the tabernacle is divided into two smaller places. Do you remember what, they, what the smaller places are? The so one is the holy place and the other is the most holy place. And the Ark of the Covenant, Ark of the Covenant was placed in the most holy place. The glory of God fell upon the top of the, of the Ark of the Covenant. That is the way that the glory of God dwells in the tabernacle. Even the priests were not allowed to enter the most holy place. They they also could only enter the top, uh, most holy place as appoint, uh, at the appointed times for the, for the specified regions only. And there was a curtain, curtain between the holy place and the most holy place. It is the ain't so you can see the pattern, pattern of the curtain uh, separating between uh, most holy place and holy place. You can see uh, some patterns, so these patterns are the angels of God. Angels of God called cherubim. The same one, I think the same figure you, you saw on the top of the Ark of the Covenant as well. But why cherubim? Why cherubim on the curtain between most holy place and holy place? Why was there a cherubim pattern on the curtain? At the entrance of, to the most holy place where God's presence Dwells. The Bible doesn't tell us clearly about why. However, many people believe that the cherubim pattern on the curtain should be related to Adam and Eve being cast out of the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. After he drove the man out, drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword. sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the, to the tree of life. So what was the Garden of Eden like? Was it the place where you do not need to walk and you can enjoy everything that you like? Above all, the Garden of Eden was a place where God and man could stay together, could have a fellowship without any barriers. That is the definition of heavens, that is the, that is the place of Garden of Eden, but the human has sinned. Human could no longer be in the Garden of Eden, and they were expelled from there. This is the familiar story we can find in Genesis. And the Bible says that the angels are keeping the east side of the Garden of Eden from other people coming. So the unbreakable barrier was put before God and humans. Because of this barrier, human can no longer be in the presence of God. That is the a result of, of the fall. It's the outcome of the fall that we can find in Genesis story. We are not allowed to approach God. That, is the, that was the problem that we can see about human beings' existence. The Israelites, so we can, if you can look, uh, if you look at the tabernacle again, the Israelites. Uh, so again, so the, the the curtain, the curtain that separates the holy place and the most holy place symbolizes the barrier between God and humanity. So just as the angels named cherubim keep the east side of the Garden of Eden from the humans, the curtain keeps the east side of the most holy place from human access. Humans cannot be in the presence of God after the fall. Because of sin, we are unable to have an intimate relationship with God. 
A tabernacle is a space that makes this impossible thing possible again. That is, sinful human beings enter, in, enter into the presence of God. So the Israelites enter the presence of God, which is in the, tabern is the, the most holy place, through the tabernacle. Tabernacle is the place that the humans can enjoy the presence of God again. Before that, I mean, the first thing that they have to do to approach God's presence is to remove their sins. So as soon as they enter through the gate on the east side, they first sacrifice the animals. That is why the altar, the bronze altar, was placed very close to the gate on the east side. In verse 3, if his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he shall offer a male without blemish. He shall bring it to the entrance, uh, entrance of the tent of a meeting that he may be accepted before the Lord. They must offer sacrifices to God before the tabernacle. Only then God may accept them. The animals will be killed in our place. But the sacrifice must be without blemish. God is pleased with the sacrifice without blemish. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 in the New Testament, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of lamb without blemish or spot. Peter is saying that Jesus was like the animal, sacrificial animal in the sacrifice, sacrifice without blemish. Jesus is both God and human. He is the only one without sin. This is why only Jesus can be a sacrifice in our place. The crucifixion of Jesus was, okay, so uh, the, Jesus became the sacrifice to break down the barrier between God and us. In Matthew chapter 27, and when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Verse 51, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook the rock spirit. So the veil between God and humans was torn. The curtain separating God, and God from humans was broken down. From the crucifixion of Jesus completely, uh, the cru crucifixion of Jesus completely resolved the problem of our sins that kept ourselves from God. So okay, let's go back to the tabernacle sacrifice again. In verse 4, he shall, buy, he shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. Laying hands, laying hands on the head of the animal is a next process and it connotates the transferring sins, transferring sins from the humans to the animals. By laying down the hands on the animals, the animals now bear the sins of the worshippers. The laying on, uh, laying on the hands on the animals, actually, uh, okay, so Israel people, by laying hands on the animals, Israel people now uh, make the animals in their places. In Pit, again, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, in the New Testament, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. So Jesus took our place on the cross. He bore our sins. That is how we die to sins and live for righteousness. In verse 5, Then he shall kill the bull before the Lord. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall bring the blood, hence throw the blood against the sides of the altar that is at the entrance of the tent of a meeting. Then the worshiper brings the animal to the front of the altar, and the worshiper, he himself, kills the animal with his own hands. Many people misunderstand the process of the sacrifice. They think that the slaughtering animals should be the role of the priest. But as you can see clearly, the Bible says clearly, it was worshippers who had to slaughter the animals. Then the priests sprinkled the water all over the altar. The blood of the animals is sprinkled 
on the altar to make it holy by the priest. The worshippers cannot handle the blood because blood is the most precious thing of life. Only the priests deal, uh, dealt with the blood. In verse 6, then he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. Who is going to chop up the animals to the pieces? It was the worshipper again. The worshippers must not only kill the animals, but also they had to cut them off into pieces. Imagine the scene. Worshippers bring animals to the tabernacle. Then they slaughter the animals on their own hands and they cut them off into pieces. How do you think they look like? At that time, the worshippers are covered in blood all over their body. The blood is splattered everywhere. The animals probably cry out, shouted of pain and suffering. The worshippers also became desperate. They identify the animals with themselves when they kill the animal, animals. I suppose that some of the worshippers also must have cried out, shouted as well. It was bloody and messy. It was emotional and gruesome. It was the scene of the wo worship a thousand years ago. This was the Old Testament worship service. The burnt offering took place every day, every day, day and night. Each and every time, worshippers killed the animal with their own hands and broke it into pieces. Worshippers were never spectators. They worship, worship was not just an interesting event to please people. The worshippers was not the customer, but the most important part of the service. This was the worship service in the Old Testament time. There's anything that we have to learn from the uh, worship in the Old Testament? Of course, obviously, we are worshiping the same God who the Old Testament people worshiped. What kind of worship do we have today? What kind of worship do you think is good worship? Is a kind of worship that is seemingly neat, clean, and smooth, with well-arranged, well with the best equipment, that was the good worship, do you think? Are you in the position of a critic who watches and evaluates the performance in front of you? Are you at the concert hall or a worship? Are you a worshiper or an audience? We must participate in the service, but not, wa uh, not watch it. Obviously, we do not offer animal sacrifices today. There are some differences. I think we have to acknowledge the differences as well. Worship today is no longer bloody and messy. Why? It was because Jesus Christ became our sacrificial animal. It is because he died on the cross in our place as the bull or the lamb or any animals did uh, in the Old Testament time. It was because he was pierced with a spear. His blood was sprinkled on the altar, and his body was burnt and offered to God. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, And by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice, sacrifice on the cross. Our sins as worshippers have been transferred to Jesus. God accepted his sacrifice as a pregnant, pregnant offering. Who killed Jesus? If we read the story of Jesus in the context of Old Testament sacrifice, we can answer that we, worshippers, killed them. Through the sacrifice, our sins as worshippers were forgiven, transferred, and finally accepted by God. We call this atonement. The atonement is not an easy word. Atonement connotes the blood, messy sacrifice of Jesus Christ, pains and suffering he went through on the cross. Atonement connotes all those meanings. The atonement is not free. 
is Christ is the life of the Son of God. We do not offer animal sacrifice today, but we should remember the sacri sacrifice of Jesus each worship service. Let's go back to the passage. Verses 7 to 9 list the, list the tasks of the priest as well. Verse 7, And the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. And Aaron's sons and the priests shall arrange the pieces, the head and the fat on the wood that is on the fire on the altar. The priest prepares for the sacrifice, verse 9, but its, in, uh, uh, but its entrails and its legs he shall wash with water, and the priest shall burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And the priest will burn all the animal body pieces on the altar on behalf of the worshippers. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Jesus is the priest as well. Jesus is both the sacrifice and the high priest in our worship service. Pastor is not in the position of a priest in worship. I am also a worshiper. I'm standing here as a worshiper. I am worshiping one and only God by preparing and delivering the sermon. So when I prepare the, when I prepare the sermon, I, I'm remind, I, I keep being reminded that this is my worship. We are all participants in worship. We are not spectators. We are not the audience. We are not customers. We are worshipers. You are a participant in the worship prepared by the high priest, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is in the worship service and help us to serve God. We are here as participants, part of the worship, and it is prepared and led by the triune God. The bloody worship of the Old Testament shows how difficult it is for a simple man to be in the presence of a holy God. Blood was necessary. It must be bloody and messy. The sacrifice of life was necessary for that. It is because of the work of Jesus Christ, who is the sacrifice, the priest, and the very presence of God. We must not remain to be spectators of the worship service. We are all participants in worship. We are all part of this service. I participate in the service by preaching, and you do it by responding to it in your daily life. PNW participate in the worship by leading music. PNW is not leading the service. You are participating in the service by leading music. And other people also participate in the service by responding to the song. You can sing, you can dance in the service because you are part of the service. You are the participant of this service. We take part in the service by praying, reading the Bible and PowerPoint. It is all part of the service. God has called you to be worshipers, but not spectators. God calls you to be a performer, not an audience. In verse 9 again, but, the, but its entrails and its legs he shall wash with water, and the priest shall burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Then our worship becomes a pleasing aroma to God. Then, only then, God will be pleased our service. Only if you are, each and every one of you are true worshipers in this place and time. I hope that all our members become worshipers this year, but not spectators at all. Okay, thank you for listening to my talk for a long time, and this is uh, the time that you can talk, you can share with the people around you. So there are some questions. Okay, so there are some questions. Please share your thoughts with your friends.
and brothers and sisters around you. Okay, and by that probably you can uh, have time to digest what you heard from the talk.
Time's up. Okay, so, uh, okay uh, music team can come, can come forward and lead the floor, please. <laughs> Sing the second one. There is a hill. There is a hill I cherish. Where stood a prayer. Is in the cross, there's 
there's nothing more I want Than just to know His love My heart is set on Christ And I will count all else as lost The greatest of my crowns Mean nothing to me now For I counted up the cost And all my wealth is in the cross I will not boast I will not boast There is I have the pride and gold But I will boast in Jesus Is in the cross, there's nothing more I want than just to know His love. My heart is set on Christ, and I will count all those as lost. The greatest of my crowns mean nothing to me now, for I counted up the cross. And all my wealth is in the cross. And all my wealth is in the cross. And all my wealth, all my wealth is in the cross. Dear Heavenly Father, we saw what the Old Testament sacrifice was like. What the Old Testament worship was like. It was desperate experience. It was passionate experience. Dear Lord, it was bloody and messy. Dear Lord, it was the worship service. Dear Lord, we learned that Jesus Christ, our Lord, took away all messy and bloody part of the worship. And you, you did the role of the animals. You did the role of a priest. And you invite us to participate in. So we are here because we said yes to the call to invite us to your worship service prepared by Triune God. Lord, please help us to take our service seriously because this is based on the precious blood of, of the Son of God. This is not simple, this is not just easy and casual. Even this is the precious, this is a valuable, this is the important, significant uh, event in our uh, lifetime. Dear Lord, please help us to focus on you during the worship time. Please help us to understand the significance of worship as well. Dear Lord, we brought the offering. Please, uh, we call this offering because uh, we also want to show our uh, thanksgiving to you, dear Lord, briefly. So I pray that please uh, accept our offering and please use this for your kingdom, for your uh, will to be actually uh, done in this on the uh, on the earth. Dear Lord, also I pray for those who are affected by COVID-19. Some of them uh, they couldn't make it to the church uh, worship because because of COVID-19 situation, please help them, protect them, and keep them safe and healthy. I, I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so now announcement time. So David, would you please come forward and lead announcement? What's good, everyone? So I don't know if you guys can read all that, but we do have a couple of announcements. So next week on Saturday, 1 to 4, we actually have a work, workshop called uh, the Safe Space uh, Workshop. So basically, it's about um, dealing with uh, and uh, when you interact with young children or anyone who is maybe uh, a bit more vulnerable. Basically, it's talking about how we can best interact with them, how to ensure that they have a you know, safe space for them to um, come to church, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there was actually a workshop uh, me and a few other people attended um, a while back, and this kind of like, because um, there's actually been a lot of 
new regulation that has been passed to, uh, to help kind of like ensure these kind of safe spaces are being built. And so this kind of the workshop following on from that. And uh, basically leaders and admin team leaders and basically people who are in the main serving areas are compulsory to attend. Um, but it's also welcome to anyone else who's keen. So basically anyone who's keen at all, I don't know why, you look, <clears throat> anyone who's keen at all and is curious or you're thinking of uh, working with children and serving or doing anything like that, or whatever, if you're just bored, please do come along, express your interest to Gideon or any of the leaders. Um, and I do re I recommend you guys attend. Um, yeah, so that's next Saturday. We also have an uh, outing on the 17th of April, uh, organized by admin team. Now, that's gonna, more info will come up as we come. Okay, so if you are keen or if you wanna help out as well, please contact Gideon uh, if you wanna learn, learn more as well. And after service today, we have 3 p.m. meeting for the leaders, okay, small group leaders. And I think that'll be it for the announcements today. Anything else? All good? All right, I'll pass back over. Okay, so the, for the first, time, first one, so if you are interested, you are keen to know about the uh, rules and principles for safety of uh, children and young people, it's about, uh, especially about the abuse. So sexual abuse and mental abuse, physical abuse, so bullying, all those things. So if you are keen to know about that, please, uh, you, can, you are free to uh, attend the meeting, attend the workshop. But registration is required, so if you are interested, please tell me so that I can complete your registration on your behalf. Okay, let's close the service by benediction. So by benediction, we can bless one another. Okay, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.